I'm delighted to share with you something that I've been working for my entire life uh, after my childhood experiences as a person who has uh, gone through uh, playful, traumatic experiences during the years of my early childhood. And uh, my name was Nicholas Theologopoulos. I was not supposed to participate in peeing contest in the neighborhood. We were leaving home, burning some Hebrew books and finding, hiding, playing hide and seek in the suburbs of Athens. So time of peace came. I had lost my father during the war years. I lost my grandfather during the civil war with the communists because he had a British passport. So I had some identity problems from the very beginning. And my lifetime has been a healing process of gradual discoveries about the nature of cultural conflicts, personal conflicts. And growing up as a child in Athens, Greece, going to school every day on the way, looking up the hill to Parthenon, I have been influenced by seeking reason and explanation. This was the home of Aristotle and all the good philosophers. And so I explored the uh, relevance of reason, understanding what had happened in those years. And I came to some very interesting insights. And I have been working on them, writing books, and every time trying to launch a revolution, a training center. So about several homes in Manchester. One is called Earth Sky Time, which is the beginning of my study of Greek mythology as family conflicts. And looking at that uh, creation story of the Greeks as a phenomenon that had order and direction, because it was something that is stories for children, but at the same time, I saw in it periodicity and morality. I saw direction that had created past the crimes in the family of the Greek gods, religions, and civilization. And I saw direction. And I puzzled this phenomenon as a scientific phenomenon that has moral outcome. And gradually I saw the science in this process. I saw the connection between emotions and phases in one's life as emotions, as determined by emotions. And I saw in there a totality, a unity. I saw a periodicity that I could also understand scientifically with two very simple models of mechanics. And because I was a Jew, I also was exposed to different kind of cultural values. And the father-son conflict of the Greek creation stories was opposite to the father-son covenant. When I went to psychoanalysis, he said, what is wrong with you? You don't hate your father. <laughs> I said, there's something wrong about psychoanalysis. And I have been working gradually, trying to introduce science into the study of behavior by studying the mental process without putting people on the couch, but by giving them little assignments of writing stories and seeing in their ideas as these unfold in an animal metaphor test, how they resolve conflict. And that has dimensions, and these are the dimensions that bring science into behavior. There are two simple mechanical models that are applying to understanding behavior. And one model is the simple harmonic motion, the pendulum oscillation, and the other one is the scale. And these are all the scientific paradigms you need to know to understand behavior as a science. So are you ready for a revolution? Are you ready to forget everything you know about psychology and all about religion and introduce science into morality and understand that morality is not a metaphysical but a physical phenomenon? Religions are mostly moral. <laughs> but you can say <laughs> religions evolve through different normative paradigms, different ways of resolving conflict and that there are insights into understanding how to improve family relations 
are particular conflict resolutions that have scientific insights into the process, but they're partial and complementary discoveries. So what I would like to share with you, uh, the few minutes that we have, first of all, the creative process is not only fun and games. It is the most serious aspect of being able to understand ourselves and understand cultures and understand where the world is being held hostage to the unresolved connection between morality and science. The Second World War was the sciences which had overcome the uh, dependence on religion, a scientific models like Marx and Freud and Hitler, fighting religion, persecuting religious people. The 9-11 is the opposite, is the world finding a new paradigm, losing communism and capitalism as their conflicts, and going into religious paradigms versus science. So 9-11 is the impact of religion attacking science. Science and religion have been at opposite ends since Prometheus stole the fire of the gods to give it to the mortals, freeing them from being cold. He was the man who baked them out of, out of dough. <laughs> so what we are possibly encountering with Levis in Manchester is a potential revolution of being able to introduce simple science in understanding our minds. And what is missing from creativity so far in recognizing it by those who are speaking, those who are operating with creativity, is that there is a moral direction to creativity. And I brought here paintings of an artist who has a resolved conflict and in identifying morality as part of his artwork. And this is what I'm trying to communicate with you today, that morality is a purely scientific phenomenon, has nothing to do with religions. Morality is a pure science. And I would like to show you the scientific principles that govern our unconscious. They manifest very easily if you, during lunchtime or later, do a little experiment, which is composing a little story between two animals. Have a dialogue. And what you'll see is that you have, I predict, mostly six exchanges, and you'll move from a conflict to a resolution. That is all. But this is a test which I have introduced into clinical practice as the most reliable and valid test for personality assessment, understanding the different personalities as different ways of resolving conflict, and helping the person simply by using creativity to understand oneself, how a person manages power, how a person resolves conflict. And these are wellness diagnostic categories. These are diagnostic categories that we need to better understand ourselves, our marriages, our cultures. Power is a variable in conflict resolution. And I start with Gorski, <laughs> both up there, reconciling the uh, pleasure and pain that is in life. And this is his last painting. And he has been my spiritual guru. I started with displaying his art back in 72 when I made an introduction of the formal theory to uh, the medical community in New Haven. And I have accumulated his paintings ever since. And I have learned a lot about behavior by seeing the dynamics of his paintings. He has a very simple language. He uses the mouth. And what you're seeing here is his last painting, a cross made of kisses with his self-portrait with a crown of thorns. I have a museum uh, on the grounds of the Wilbertson Inn, which I bought in 87, and I called it Art to Science. And my interest was not to be uh, in hospitality, but in education. Art to Science, at this point, has also a nice, unique museum, which is called Museum of the Creative Process. And it starts with an Easter Island head, who is the wizard who has written all the stories of the world, and he's crying. And next to him, there is a scale. And the scale is science, and tells the wizard. Uh, the wizard asks, 
how come after all my stories, the world is not living happily ever after? And the scale science answers. Don't despair, the secrets to happiness are in all stories, but instead of believing the stories, see what is universal in all stories. And this is the plot of stories. A conflict resolution phenomenon, creativity as a scientific phenomenon. And one of the exhibits is a sculptural trail through the history of love, through the history of religions, discovering different ways of restructuring family relations and redefining the divine. The divine is not the Abrahamic God. The divine has been redefined by cultures as they evolve resolving conflict. And the divine is a reflection of a particular way of resolving conflict that has dimensions. Religions, like behaviors, are natural science phenomena with dimensions. They're measurable. And as partial discoveries, they're accountable to law, natural law. They're accountable to understanding that they are misleading the public by saying that the partial discoveries, partial truths are the total truths. So there is tremendous significance in being able to understand how to reconcile science and religion. This is a problem that can help us deal with the extremism of our days where people are clinging to a moral paradigm, be that Islamic, be that Orthodox Jew, or be that Christian, and that the particular behaviors are not particularly moral. They're partial moralities, and they have pathologies. And religions like human relations are paradigms of how people get neurotic by focusing on one behavior, like bulimia and anorexia is a disease that causes by focusing on one behavior and losing control and becoming both a person who is polarized by the two extremes going back and forth like an oscillation of a pendulum that is uh, perpetual. So first of all, I would like to present to you the scientific principles with the uh, simplicity of what is conflict and what is resolution. Here I have a very simple mechanical model. And this is very important because all of the variables that are going into the study of this pendulum oscillation belong to also to behavior. We can use the constructs of simple harmonic to talk about displacement. And the displacement is how far a person goes from what is acceptable, be that the person murders or person is murdered, these are positions in a spectrum of normative behavior. Gorsi has mouthlessness and, and kisses. And you see how the evolution of his mouth presents a continuum of transformations to conflict resolution. We have different ways of creating a normative system and every culture has its own norms. And conflict is simply the deviation of a pendulum but unlike the pendulum oscillation, which can be presented as a back and forth and also as a cross section, the mind completes its business to conflict resolution in three oscillations. And so this is what is the conflict resolution process. It's a mechanism of three oscillations of a pendulum bringing people to resolution. Genesis is not about the creation of the universe, it's about the creation of the symbolic universe. Neither evolutionists nor creationists are accurate about what they're saying about Genesis. Genesis is just another metaphor of conflict resolution and the celebration of rest as conflict resolution. In the Greek mythology, we also have the three oscillations in the drama. And Aristotle, who observed drama as a perfect universe, he said there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, continuity of action, and at the end there is a moral discovery. Moral discovery, there is a deus ex machina, an angel who is coming to tell the protagonist that he has to die or be punished or be rewarded. So something that is missed by talking 
about creativity is that it has a moral direction. Now, how is the mechanics of the moral direction accounted for? And this is the other mechanical model that I would like to show you here, so you can understand the simplicity of our unconscious as a simple mechanism, as a simple equilibrial mechanism. Once the balance is upset by a conflict, the scale is like weighted down by a weight. And there are several ways to correct that conflict. The several ways are three ways, actually. One is removing the weight, which is doing the opposite. Another one is placing a weight on the other tray, which is the reciprocal. And the third way is moving the fulcrum on this, uh, uh, moving the weight on the fulcrum. So these are the three ways, and the latter one I equate with alienation going to mutual respect, a simpler condition. Now, we're running out of time, but I would like to say that we have the beginning of understanding behavior by using creativity as a means for integration of art and science. The principles of conflict resolution are governing the creation of, of, of our religions as discoveries of conflict resolution. Greece discovered in the epics of Homer how to domesticate the woman, mastery, which is like putting weight on the other tray. India discovered cooperation, which is removing the weight. And that is why Shiva is stepping on a little child as he's balancing himself in the air. Shiva is stepping on the child like Buddhism is seeking to repress desires, relaxing, detaching. And finally, Judaism discovered how to resolve conflict by introducing mutual respect, the third operation, but mutual respect between father and son, not man and woman. The messianic religions introduced mutual respect between mother and child, but not between man and woman. So to finish business today, we have to reform psychology, religions, integrate them. Morality is very part of creativity, and we have to honor it no matter in which area we are, be that in a theater, a movie theater, or a temple, old or new. Creativity is a spiritual phenomenon, and we have to respect religions for discovering it, but at the same time, knowing that we have to change them to heal the world. Science has to triumph as a moral science. Thank you.